Good morning, cowboy. Voice is getting a little better, eh? Uh, cowboy Jim, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. I, um, I'm kind of on a roll today, and I have to be, because um, I am going back to work um, in 48 hours, roughly. And uh, I... I I will be doing a 14 and 7 shift. Uh, we call it a set. That's uh, seven days, seven nights, and seven off. And unless God does something very, very special uh, in, in the next 14, 16 days counting today, um, I, I won't be able to make videos uh, on that 14, uh, seven days, seven nights. So I have been prayerfully uh, contemplating what God would have me to say. Uh, my concern is always, and I reach my hand over onto my Bible, my concern is that I do not appear to be too tough. The reason for that is simply this. I want people to know that in spite of my physical condition, which is rugged, it's strong, in spite of the roughness of my life, it's been rough. What God's taken me through, no one in their right mind hardly would ever believe. And and initially, when I started doing YouTube videos, people didn't believe. Hey? They didn't believe that a man could go through the stuff that I did. Um, the I I I lived on adrenaline. Hey? I. I tried to live out what my mother taught to me as to how to be a man. And she was a good teacher. She was an old fashioned, wonderful lady who worked her buns off always. And she showed me how to work like a man. She really wanted to know beyond question that I was no coward. So she put me in positions where I had to uh, man up, and God had enabled me to do that. And thus, I, I have been concerned that my presentation of my life to the children who watch, uh, evidently I have a lot of kids watch uh, my stuff, the other day, and I'm, I'm approaching this subject very, very, very carefully. Uh, the other day, I had the privilege and the honor of talking to a man, a um, friend of mine, and we had gone down to get a price on differentials and so on like that for his truck. And the man said, I am so proud to have you be the last person that my son listens to, uh, son 17, daughters 12, before they go to sleep. And he says, you know, um, I want my son to know that a strong man can bend the knee to God. I thought about that. I thought, I, I, I've been concerned uh, of not, of showing too much of myself um, because I didn't want, <laughs> I didn't want, um, I didn't want anyone to emulate copy uh, the things that God and I have gotten through. And yet that's silly because what God has brought me through 
has taught me to be a better man, a stronger man, um, rough, but with a heart that is larger, a caring heart that is large. I am reminded by God of the man I was walking from the smoke pit. I smoke, okay? And I was walking from the smoke pit, and a man was walking towards me. I would say in his early 50s, and he, I, I bet he's still watching, so he'll smile at that, but I think so. And he said, I just love your inspirational videos. I never thought of them as being inspirational. I I started making videos in order to give my grandchildren, grandsons, an opportunity to get to know me because I worked my whole life. I raised my sons uh, until they were about 14. That, that was when they turned 14. I gave them a 300 Weatherby Magnum rifle, both. Uh, and I mean, they are rugged, and we hunted, and we fished. And we did the fulfillment of living a life dedicated to God, but a robust life. And we did live a robust life. I am reminded of a drug dealer who called at three in the morning and um, he has since committed suicide. I'm still not going to use his name. Uh, in the little town of Owls, which is really growing, by the way, and uh, here in Alberta. Uh, and the man said uh, his name. He said, uh, could you please put Scott on the phone? I said, I said, son, it's three in the morning. He said, I'm going to talk to your son. He and my son had had, that's Big Scott, Scott's Miracle, an ongoing battle of three fistfights, perhaps only two at that time. The third one was uh, the final one. Now, that young man, I said, um, you do realize that you are calling me at three in the blessed morning. He said, yes, get your son up. I said, son, you and I, were, we're going to have words eh, pretty quickly. I said, how many people do you have with you? He said, three or four. I said, son, that's not enough. Eh? I said, it's not enough. Uh, I said, do you know other any other uh, strong fighting men who will stand with you and fight? Myself, my oldest boy, my youngest boy, Big Joe. I said, you are going to need help because my sons and I are going to get up. I'm I'm getting my sons up, son, and we're coming into town, and we'll meet you at Hay City Saloon parking lot at five in the morning. And I said, you better get more help, because you have really irritated me. You have really transgressed in that you caught me up during the night. And I said, we're going to drive the few miles into town and you're going to regret the day you ever called and threatened my family about anything. My two sons and I, we drove into town and we, we sat there and 
my big Chev truck at the time. And 5.30 came along, no one showed. Six o'clock came along, no one showed. And I thought, I'm kind of glad that happened, that they didn't come. I don't want to fight. I want to I want to lead people to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's very simple. And one more terrible story. Back in the early 80s, a big man, a roofer, uh, I had... um, dropped in. My son and I were running out of work, big Scott. I said to him, I said, you know, um, my boy is a pretty good carpenter. If you need some extra help, uh, I said, I could get him to drop in. And he said, you mean big Scott? I said, yeah. He said, uh, well, Gretzky. I looked at him. I was a Calgary Flames fan. That's where we lived down there. He said, Gretzky. I said, why do you call me that? He said, you're whining. I said, son, I'm not whining. But I want you to know something. You ever refer to me as Gretzky again, you're going to be in trouble. I went back to work. Uh, with my son uh, out in the country. We we um, we worked till about lunchtime. I said, you know, why don't you go ask that twit, uh, big dude, about 260, he weighed, uh, ranch kid, a handful. I said, ask him for a job. So my son did, and then he came back to where I was, and he said, uh, he said, that guy called me Gretzky's son. I said, you got to be kidding. He said, no. I said, listen. I said, you do thus and so. And um, I'll take a drive into town and grab us um, a coffee. I drove over to where that guy was working. I got out of the truck. He was on the roof with at least three other guys. Ladder, so on. I said, son, um, y'all come down now. He said, why? I said, because I'm going to hurt you. I am going to hurt you. He said, I'm not coming down. I thought, that's a wise choice, probably for both of us. He outweighed me by a fair bit. And... I thought about it, and I thought, you're not getting away that easy. And uh, I said, I told you, do not ever call me Wayne Gretzky. It was a pride thing on my part. Wayne Gretzky was a great hockey player. I really enjoyed watching him as long as they weren't playing the Calgary Flames. I didn't enjoy that. Um, I got halfway up that ladder onto the roof poor place to fight. But anyways, I did. And I thought, this is stupid. And so I climbed back down the ladder. He said, yeah, look at you. He said, you call yourself a Christian. I said, yes, sir, I do. And he said, you behave like this. I said, son, you come down off the roof. eh?" I may have been 40. I'm not sure. Something. Uh, he, was, he was like 30. I said, you come off the roof, son. I'm going to hang a licking on you. And then I'm going to talk to you about Jesus Christ. He was not coming off the roof. So I say all that nonsense to say God has not called you to be a doormat. God has called you to be a man. 
you read scripture, God gives you examples of of what men really are supposed to behave like. Going back to that wonderful man who helped me so much to understand it's not wrong for me to share with you what it has meant for me to be a man who loves God but will not take a back seat to anyone. A couple of years ago, I allowed a, a man to beat me in the foyer of a company in a mine here. And I knew he was out to get me for, he's the guy that uh, tried to uh, do an elder abuse thing. Eh? And uh, I, I, I wondered from the Lord, I said, Father, uh, I don't know that I can take a beating from this man without striking back in self-defense. And trust me, I can do that. I was told. I said, God, I am asking you a favor. I said, please, when he attacks me, please do not allow him to punch me in the face. I'm not handsome. But if I saw that punch coming, I would respond. And God honored me. I took the beating that I did not know that I could. And I did. And I was hurt. And he lost his job. Well, so did I. In a couple of weeks, I hadn't even done anything. But Again, I say this is contrary to the videos that I usually do. I want you to know that God loves you. And if you're a teenager, you're a, you're, you're a man child, um, learn to be kind, considerate, polite. Learn to know God. Learn to know that God has not called you to be a bully, nor to pick on people, nor to tease people, but he has called you to be a man who knows who Jesus Christ is, who has accepted through this simple short prayer, God forgive me. I believe, I choose to believe that Jesus Christ is your son, that Jesus suffered, bled, and died on the cross. Jesus took a licking, and Jesus was killed. He was buried for three days and rose from the dead. God requires you to give answer as to who you say that Jesus is. The son of the living God who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins. That you should humble yourself and pray and accept Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross for your sins? Absolutely. Because no matter the sin that you have done in your lifetime, I believe that God will only ask you that simple question. What have you done with my son, Jesus? And your answer will determine where you spend eternity. I know I say this all the time. Billy Graham did too. He had the same basic altar call every time. And the altar was always filled. I was there once. I went to the front. I needed that assurance that maybe I wanted to know beyond question that my roughness 
ruggedness was not getting in the way of God's tenderness, his heartfelt love for us. But the day is coming when you are going to answer God that question. And when you do answer that question to God, you will be a day and uh, that's the last that's the last voice you'll probably hear this side of uh eternity is is God posing that question for you. What have you done with my son Jesus? Your answer will uh determine uh heaven or hell. What you have done counts for nothing. It, what you will do in giving that answer counts for everything. God loves you. God bless you. Remember, you um, um, children, let's say, hey, I'm 74, but young teenagers, older teenagers, young 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, remember, it is good to be tough. It is better to be tough and to have a heart that's sold out to God, a forgiven heart, a heart of respect and honor and Going back to that man who so honored me, who prompted this video, he said, I want my son to know a strong man, a rough, rugged man who is not ashamed to bow the knee to God. How are you living out your life in Christ? Are you a man? Are you a strong man? Are you a humble man? But are you the man that God has called you to be. God has not called you to be a doormat nor an abuser. He has called you to humble yourself and pray, turning from your wicked way, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can do it. It's up to you. You have been given by God the choice between good and evil. God had to do that in order to give you a choice that you could choose whom you will believe, God or and Jesus or Antichrist and Satan. It's your choice. Only you can make it. And how you live is up to you. You have this glorious opportunity of showing the world what a man can be like who loves the Lord and is yet not afraid uh, to be rugged and yet is not afraid to have a tender heart. That's where I walk. Pretty narrow way, but it's uh, headed in the right direction. So, mm, mm, I will uh, shut this down. Please, please remember, I thank you for watching my YouTube videos. Please remember, that God loves you. And please also remember that only you will determine where you spend eternity. It's not just the outside that God looks at. 
It's the heart. It's the heart that counts. But don't you think that God wants doormats? He does not. God bless you now. You all take care. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching my YouTube videos. I call them mine. They're God's and mine. We work on them together. He loves me. Trust me, that's a challenge. Okay? God bless.